All right, it's Thursday, 4 o'clock. It's time for the one shot. No, it's time for the real estate happy hour. That's right. One shining moment leading us in because of why? It's Final Four time. And Auburn Tigers, they have their one shining moment. Hopefully, Wait. hopefully that wasn't it, right? Yeah, hey, right. Oh, yeah, hopefully not it. But man, what a run. Hey, by the way, in case y'all are wondering, because I know everybody's curious, we did get to see the game from the boat, didn't we? Yes. I mean, it, what a what a what a game yeah, we that was! Friday night uh, in the casino bar, of course, right? Yeah, hey, you got to be there. I think Absolutely, that's where they got to play the games from there. So uh, that was good, and then luckily the plane got delayed, and we watched the whole game. Yes, on the the, the second half and overtime on the plane. Yeah, he's laughing because I'm begging the plane, like opposite of everybody else on the plane. And where were we? What city were we in? Uh, uh, West Palm. West Palm Beach. I'm begging the plane not to take off. Yeah. Because, of course, the plane that we were on, you know, Southwest has uh, internet on every plane in the sky now. Yeah. Except that one. Except that one. It didn't work somehow, and, and we were waiting on a group of 7th uh, and 8th graders to Oh, to yeah. So that was great uh, when they got on, right? But anyway, man, great cruise last week, huh? Absolutely. Man, what a gorgeous Man, we had ship. a good time. Uh, the brand new Celebrity Edge. Um, it was different. I mean, a different than anything I've ever seen before. Course, yeah, you know. Yeah, so it was it was very nice, updated. Um, what were your favorite things on there? Well, you know, I I I, I love the interact. I love the nightclub that was interactive for kids. I mean, when I say nightclub, it's they had a club that was a nightclub that was multi use facility. The club. Yeah, the club. We played what? What did we play? Family Deal Feud, no deal. deal or No Deal. Uh, my, but but it only solidified my thing there. There are some stupid the, people. The laser in the world. maze. Laser Maze, the champion right here. Oh, me and Brady were the team champions for yeah. Laser Maze, highest score in three months. It's huge. And by the way, that's when he says deal. three months, the ship's only been open for about three months. Yeah, so that's a big deal. Man, yeah. I, I, I Even tell you, though the, we didn't get anything for that. The food was really good. Yeah, food was good. Um, let's say. It's, 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 I think it's better to to go to the same place to eat. I had more fun on you know a couple of cruises ago going to yeah, the same shipped, place. What he's talking about is we went to different restaurants, and that was a little much. We like our waiters to be the same. Yeah, St. Martin was really cool. Maho Beach, where the planes land, was awesome. If you've uh, never done that, that was very cool. Um, he has a great Facebook ride, Riding around St. St. Martin was, was fun. Uh, where else? Tortola? Tortola, nice. I mean, they're recovering from the uh, uh, hurricane. Yeah, that was one thing that I was surprised about was, you know, it's been, I think it's been three years since Hurricane Irma went through there, and uh, uh, it was still a lot of damage. Like, even Oyster Bay at, at St. Martin, had, had and, which is a resort. That, that's why I was surprised, Massive. because it's, it's a huge resort that obviously has a lot of money, See, which I would think... Uh, Still had some work to be done. Yeah. By the way, one thing we did learn is that I, I, my favorite, one of the funniest things that we saw was, you remember we got to Orient Beach. We didn't go on to the nude beach, but they have a nice, beautiful sign with a nice, pretty couple on the front. And then right below the picture, it says Family Oriented Resort. Yeah, it's a nude beach for family oriented. But I don't know what kind of families are going. I don't think my family growing up would have been. But uh, but by the way, anyway, Celebrity Edge, good ship. The pool, uh, the pool was nice. The pool was nice. Yeah. Uh, magic carpet. Magic carpet going up and down. Uh, drinks were good. Paper straws were not, huh? They sucked. It, it, let me just tell you. Royal Caribbean Cruise Line, great stock. Knock it off with the paper straws already. The, the straw is about midway through your, your drink. I don't care if you're drinking a Coke or a cocktail. Man, you're tasting paper about midway through. Yeah, and they're soft and mushy, and by the time you get done with your drink, that half the straw's falling apart. Look, you it's and I weird. You and I both are like, hey, I don't want to hurt the animals either. But like, let's don't take away plastic straws until we have an alternative that works. Yeah, let's do something else. Because, like you said, like I remember one time, you, you know, you looked over and said, I just don't know if this was the biggest issue that was in play. Uh, that, that we needed just to remove them. Basically. Right, right. But now, I did love the fact that my wife somehow had gotten word of this and brought her own. Oh, good. <laughs> I mean, Bendy, too. But uh, anyway, they do suck. Man, talking about real estate, did you see rapper 50 Cent is making national news because his listing agent overpriced his house? Yeah, just recently sold his house in Farmington, Connecticut for, what, $3 million, $2.9 but, but, million? Right, right. They had it listed at one point for eighteen point five million. 
Right. And so it's a little deceiving what the media is saying. The media is like, oh, it's 84%. Uh, he lost 84%. But he bought the house from Mike Tyson. I love how we're just talking about celebrities here, right? He bought it from Mike Tyson uh, for about $4 million. But by the way, David would love this place. Why? Because it has an indoor pool, a hot tub, and a nightclub. Just in case you needed a nightclub. I mean... I mean, all the proceeds went to charity or something like that. So. Yeah, and let's don't be confused about why he did that. I mean, it's tax time, right? I mean, and plus you're 50 cent. Yeah. I mean, Michael Bruno understands that kind of problem. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so, so anyway, great story there. Apparently, uh, you know, we're going to get the stock market in a little bit, but apparently everything's going great for stocks, uh, for mortgages. Uh, rates are down Mortgage demand is the highest it's been since fall of 2016. Wow, that's three years, really, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, three years. Uh, getting old. two and a half years at least. 30-year fixed right now, 4.08. What? Uh, yeah, 4.08 on average. Man, you leave the country, you come back, and look what happened. Yeah, 15 years dropped to almost almost three and a half. So, uh, My very, God. very attractive rates there. We do have some refinance opportunities that are open to some people now. We've still got, you know, I went back through a lot of past clients looking at some some numbers, and I've still got people that are, you know, at 5% on, you know, FHA loans, for example. So, uh, obviously, that might be some opportunity there to refinance. Maybe even if they've been in it for seven to eight years, maybe we could put them in a 20-year. Maybe we could shave uh, three years off of their, two to three years off of their original term what and, do, and do that. What does their time horizon need to be if they're looking at doing this? I mean, obviously, if I'm selling in the next year, I don't need to be refinancing. But what oh does that yeah, time I mean, need if to be? you're selling in the next year, but I mean, I don't. A lot of people, I'm not sure if they're aware, especially in this climate, if they're selling a year from now. But, um, but but I need to be assured that I'm staying because it's not going to make because there are going to be some costs associated. Yeah, there's going to be some costs associated with it. Uh, just depends on your scenario. I mean, if you're if you, that scenario that I just mentioned, probably not going to kill you if you sell in a year or two because you're still shaving, you know, a few years off the mortgage. So, what about changing our like like you? I've, I've discussed this before, but your advice. Uh, you had me go from a thirty to a twenty, and then you said let's refi again and let's go to a fifteen. Yeah, so that's basically what we're talking about. I mean, you got to. Um, you got to create benefit, okay? So you got to have benefit to the mortgage. Now, a, a lot of people, some companies in town, I know they like to, to prey on, well, well, let's roll your car loan in there. Well, <laughs> yeah, be careful doing that because you really got to do the math here. If we're rolling a five-year car loan into a 30-year mortgage, <laughs> they don't go together. Of course you're going to save money. I mean, that anybody can do the math and figure that out. Uh, so don't be fooled by, you know, we're going to save 120 bucks a month. Uh, you know, that may may or may not be a good deal if you're, just stretching debt out. Um, but so, yeah, just create benefits. Certainly, if we're going, if you've got about 22 years left on a mortgage and we're going to a 20-year fixed or a 15, you are cutting real time off of that mortgage and saving real money. Um, so that's that's something to think about, whether or not it's, you know, monthly savings or maybe your payment's the same or maybe going up a little bit. Well, you had, let me just give you a case, a case scenario, is that you had me, when you were looking at mine, you were saying at, at each time you cut me to the, uh, you can't cut me like you slight, you know, but, uh, no, you said, I don't think your payment's changing much. Yeah. Right? right. And so what ended up happening was I was safe with the 30 year payment. I, I was cool with it. You said, no, no, now we're going to go to 20. When we got to the 15, serious, serious, uh, principal was getting paid and it has made the difference just by doing that and taking your advice has made the difference of probably thirty to forty thousand dollars additional money being available to my family to put into a new house when we sell. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it changes things uh, a great deal. You're paying off the loan faster. You're building equity faster. Uh, some FHA loans, you know, in the past two or three years, that mortgage insurance is for the life of the loan, so we could refinance out of mm. that. Uh, so a lot of different things to look at. Look, we had one guy in the office talking to somebody about uh, maybe changing from a 15 to a 30 and, and investing some of the difference, uh, saying you can make 6.5% interest uh, or 6.5% gains on the, uh, what's up, Ray, uh, on the money. So 
A lot of different scenarios. Now, Depends on your situation. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, you're a, you're a gambler in that respect, but you're not that. I don't think you're that aggressive. I'm not that aggressive, but um, that that really depends on your situation and uh, the the financial. You know, some people are more financially savvy. Uh, maybe this person has more time to watch the market. Maybe they enjoy that. Uh, you know, maybe they've already got money in other places. I feel like you know, if you're diversifying, you've got uh, money in real estate, then that's uh, a good way to spread it out because that real estate is going to go up or down regardless of how much you owe on it. Well, Clark Howard mentioned the other day, and get your opinion on this, was talking about, you know, you talked about earlier is looping stuff in, like credit card, debt, and all this, looping it all in. Clark Howard said that when anytime you refinance that kind of crud into a loan, he says now, when the credit card company was going to come after you for that, they were just going to come after you. But now, they're going to take the roof over your kid's head and take it away from you as opposed to, because well, mostly, problem, well, the, pro the problem is, is, is you're, you're talking about habits. So a lot of times you roll in a car loan, you roll in a credit card, then you go borrow more. Okay, so there's a problem with habits there. Uh, you're not really making a great financial decision. Now, if that is part of an overall plan for you to change behavior going forward long term, then great, go for it. But if you're just, you know, cleaning those credit cards up, running them back out, rolling that auto loan so you got one car paid for, you go get another one. That's I mean, a great point. Th then you're just continuing to roll debt. Now, to your point, yeah, the credit card companies, now, okay, nobody wants to get in a situation where people are coming to collect debt, but the credit card companies can't take anything from you. They can ruin your credit. Uh, now, if you roll it into the mortgage and start missing those payments, then yes, the mortgage company can certainly foreclose on the house and take the house from you. Um, and because I think that was what you, yeah, because what he was saying was you're ballooning a payment that you were okay with. You were just probably missing some of that credit card payment. You were making your monthly mortgage payment, but now you've increased that payment, <laughs> and you're you weren't able to make the payment down here when it was just the credit card. So what makes you think? Because now you have to make that entire mortgage payment. Right. You have to make the whole thing. Yeah. You can't just play part of it. And that's when that's when some companies will will. Uh, uh, put all the numbers together and, and make it look like you're saving money when, uh, in fact, it may not be the best. You are truly saving money, okay, uh, on a monthly cash flow basis, but now you're sp stretching, ballooning everything back out to 30 years. You're blowing up all the, the mortgage payments that you've made for however long you've been in the house because you're resetting back to a 30-year mortgage. So it really just depends on details of your situation. But I've look, I've been in the business for a while. I've seen a lot Long of people time. play on uh, consumers and, and talk them into to loans that may or may not be a good deal. And it, that's your pet peeve. If you want to ever see this guy get upset, it's at these these people that prey, these other companies, if you will, in that in their industry that just prey on on the naivete of people, which I don't blame them for being naive because it's easy on all this because you got all these terms, all this. Yeah, and there's a lot of numbers on the page. Look, not everybody's going to understand all the, all the mortgage math. And, you know, when somebody just presents it in a way that says, hey, you're saving 100 bucks a month. That's not telling the story. I mean, some, uh, but, but some people are going to be But like, you've yeah, said it before. It. Numbers tell a story. And we got to know why the numbers are what they are. What's going into making that number? Yeah, what's really going on? So anyway, uh, it's it's interesting though. So we'll see. You know, refinance is obviously probably going to tick up. Uh, I don't think rates are going to go up. I think they're going to, if anything, keep going down. Do you um, really? I mean, yeah, I we're mean, at three and a half on a fifteen. You think we we could potentially be at three and a quarter or something like that? I, th I think you know, right now we're just over four on a thirty. I think we could start seeing some some high threes on a thirty. Um, what does that mean to somebody that that say is now getting intrigued by a fifteen? From a let's say they have, they owe two fifty on a loan. What what's the difference between a fifteen and a thirty really at those rates? Oh, that's going to be uh, we're going to have to do the math on that. But it's good. The payment's obviously going to be a good bit higher. But look, if you right. if anybody's looking at this and, and waiting on them to go any further, look if it makes sense now to do something, you need to do something now. Well, and I would uh, encourage I you wait, to call him. Yeah, I wouldn't wait on rates to improve any further, even though I think they might. There's a chance, but hey, look. We never know when things could turn around and go the other way. We're always, you know, one headline from uh, things changing. You you saw it happen in November. 
A uh, little bit has happened this year. I mean, a, a few weeks ago, the Fed came out and said, so, so we're one headline away from this, from, from the whole game changing. So if you get an opportunity to, to lock in some of these rates where they're at right now, you should do it. Well, you know, by the way, 413-7990, David Arnett.com. Just go there, get it. I did it. You can do it too. I feel like a NASCAR driver now. You're supposed to now drink the David Arnett Kool-Aid. Yes, yes. Uh, we just need the little, the the little logo up there. Yeah, I love it when they get on Instead of hitting the little smiley, we could hit the... Yeah. Arnett. Yeah. We could just hit the banner ad. Bam. Cruise ships. Uh, but anyway. All right. Moving on. Uh, we want to talk about seven things to avoid after you've applied for a mortgage because these guys have underwriters that are going through your file and guess what they're doing? They're updating all this information. Yeah, we re-verify everything. We actually have, look, we got a new disclosure. Every time every time something comes up, we come up with a new disclosure. We got a new one for that. A re-verification warning to borrowers. A warning. It says, do not do this, do not do that. And a couple of them, number one is don't change jobs or the way you're paid at your job. People really don't understand Do they really this. do this? They will quit their job. They'll change <laughs> jobs. Uh, they'll retire. Look, we've seen it all. Retire? Oh, yeah. Oh, she's, not lo she's no longer working here. She retired. Retire? Oh. That doesn't make any sense that you would think it was okay. Yeah, absolutely. And what are you talking about? They're getting changed the way you get paid. Give us an idea on that. Okay, well, uh, for example, going from uh, salary plus commission to 100% commission. Oh, yeah. Ugh. Perfect timing. Man, look, we got to have averages for some of this stuff. So that would be a bad idea to do during loan application. What, talk about the verification there. What are they doing? Call and saying, hey, how are they paid? Or do you show them bank stubs or uh, pay, stubs. pay stubs? Well, uh, we'll we verify pay stubs. Well, obviously, we look at pay stubs. That'll tell us everything about uh, whether you're hourly, salary, commission, et cetera. Uh, we also have some verification of employment forms that we get filled out that'll break down base bonus commission, things like mm -hmm. that. And then prior to closing, we do call and do another verbal verification of employment. So we'll get the employer on the phone and say, hey, does uh, Call Your Swecker still work there? And they'll say no. no. And then we have issues. Yes. All right, so moving on. Next one. one. Number two, don't deposit cash into your bank accounts. Okay, now this has always been kind of a um, misunderstood thing for borrowers. Why doesn't cash work? We can't verify where the cash came from. If we can verify where the money came from, then it's fine. If you sell a car or grandma gives you 10 grand or mm -hmm. uh, you sell a horse. I've had people do that before. Oh, wow. In Alabama. For... Yeah. So that's fine. But, you know, we can't source just cash because we're assuming. Here, here's the problem with it. We assume that maybe you took a loan out from, uh, I went to call you and asked for a loan. You know, uh, four grand. I need four thousand dollars. He's charging me eight and a half percent interest. Good. And you know, he's making me pay two hundred bucks a month. Well, that affects my ability to repay the mortgage, right? Because now I got to pay him two hundred bucks a month. So we don't know if that cash was a result of that. I got you. Now we do have. They have changed some guidelines a little bit, where you know, cash deposits less than usually 50% of your gross income. So let's say you make $4,000 mm -hmm. a month, 50% of your gross would be 2,000. So any large deposit, <laughs> cash deposits less than 2,000, we may not have to ask for that now. But, but look, cash. But uh, talk about the, with so many people using stuff like Venmo and you know Julia's stuff, my daughter's stuff, the moms are exchanging Venmo and that kind of thing. Is there, which bank accounts are y'all looking at? Anything that I submitted to you or yeah. y'all have access to other ones? No. Would you just transfer it to a small account and just operate out of something else if I was going to put petty cash? Yeah, but the thing is, is if we see transactions between accounts, we find everything, okay? So you need to be, you need to call me or be good at hiding stuff because we'll find it. So, so like if you've got an, another account that you uh, play around yeah, with and yeah, move yeah. money into and then you send one transfer from that account to the account you sent me, then I see that account. Now I got to ask for it, right? Ah, now I got to do all that. So in other words, just chill out while we're in this process. Yes. Because yes. what's the average time frame that the, all this takes place? Oh man, the average, uh, you know, we're doing a lot more uh, pre-approvals, which means we get you pre-approved and then you go uh, find a house, find a house. So that could stretch this out. But typically if you just call me today and we're under contract and we're closing in 30 days, you know, 30, 45 days is usually the time frame. So 
um, stick with that. And, you know, usually cat people say cash is king. Well, in our business, cash can cause a problem. <laughs> Interestingly <laughs> enough. Absolutely. Number three. Uh, number three, don't make any large purchases like a new car furniture for your new home. Look, same thing. All right. Any um, large amounts of money moving out of your account can cause problems. Um, you know, if you finance that car, you finance that furniture, again, this adds on a monthly payment, which uh, challenge or, you know, may questions your ability to repay our loan. We are most concerned with you paying us first. This okay? is probably the most, of all the ones we're going to tell today, it happens all the time, especially with young people. No I, doubt. I can't tell you how many times. Rooms to go. Darren James, you'll tell us here. Rooms to go. They go up in a line of credit. Or they the dude wants a new truck, so he just decided he was going to go get a new truck uh, and finance it because he had already gotten his pre-approval letter. No doubt. And, and people want to go want to go spend cash uh, on on furniture. They want to go finance furniture. Uh, you know, on a lot of loans, we have to refresh the credit a week less than a week before closing. Okay, so that's another thing. If you if you run up your credit card balances during the process, we're going to find that. Absolutely, it's Listen, so crazy. we're going to find everything. You sometimes I tell people I'm like your defense attorney. Okay, you can tell me, you'd be a good we'll, one, and we'll figure it out. But don't don't try to. Don't try to do everything on your own and don't, oh man, we've, look, we've had people in here that uh, tried to hide foreclosures. They tried to hide bankruptcies. How they thought you weren't going to find a foreclosure? And, and I mean, they try to cover it up right, I mean, deep into the process. And then they get mad. Then they get mad at us. Well, you know what's funny? One time I, I went in, this is years ago, and... I don't know what this guy, I was working at a restaurant and I didn't really know the guy had gotten in trouble and I co-signed on a bond for somebody. I didn't realize I was really co-signing that he would come back, but it's not the same as number four. Yeah, the, number four, don't co-sign other loans. Same thing, look, if you, why do you think they want you to co-sign? Right, because yeah. you're going to pay it back if the other person doesn't. Well, I was glad the, the guy ding went dong? back. Come on, so the, if you co-sign, yes, if you co-sign on a loan, it is your debt. It, I don't care. Uh, Okay, maybe we can get around it if somebody else is making payments, but just don't do it. Don't do it. It's it's nuts because your child, now there are situations, but if your child can't afford the house and you think they're just magically going to okay, make yeah. the payment. Yeah, okay, so uh, sure, there are maybe some scenarios, but don't get upset when that <laughs> co-sign loan causes you problems. Look, go help everybody. Go help your friends. Go help your kids. Everybody. Co-sign for everybody you want to, but when you come get the mortgage, make sure you got enough income to carry those Real quickly loads. on that, if someone's out there and has co-signed for somebody, will that affect them getting another mortgage with you uh, for their own residence? It yeah. counts just the same, It'll correct? affect everything, yeah. Now, if somebody else has made the payments for 12 months, yada, 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 all those... Loan people out there that are watching this, they don't know what he's talking about, right? 12 months, we can document, whatever, whatever. Yeah, you thought this guy didn't know what he's but, talking about. He does. But look. That's right. Just, you know, it, it's it's your debt. How many times have you gone to verify this other person is making a loan and, you know, maybe they paid it later? What I don't know. Whatever. There are exceptions to everything, but just don't do it. Yeah, try to avoid it. Next one is, let's see. Don't change bank accounts. Don't change bank accounts. Now, this one's kind of funny because, uh, you know, a lot of times... We'll have people that just move money all the time. I don't know what they do. They're, like every couple of days, moving money from this account to that account, this account to that account. It's funny. What do you so, think they're doing? I, it just baffles me. Yeah, is it's it crazy. It doesn't happen all the time. But there are some people that just move money around just all the time like it's a nervous tick or something. Let's go in here. A nervous tick. Let's go in here. i got to move it. Okay, it's Wednesday. So exciting. i got to transfer funds again. I love watching. Oh, I can't see it move, but I love it moving. Yeah, yeah. So, um... You know, that, that can create some headaches. Uh, don't apply for new credit. We did touch on this a little bit. Number six, don't apply for new credit. Uh, again, your, your credit's going to get pulled. It could affect your credit scores. Um, you know, one question that, that came out from someone on the show was this. And it, the question was raised about, because everybody knows I, I love to play the credit card game with uh, miles, miles and points. And it was talking about how can you carry so many, uh, how can you carry so many cards and and it not affect you? 
Now listen, it doesn't affect my credit score because I pay them on time and then I just hold them aside and all that. But, but, next time I come see this guy, you know what he's gonna tell me to do? He's gonna tell me, call your, <laughs> the fact that you can get out $432,000 out of credit cards means we're gonna have to close some of these accounts before I'm gonna give you a loan because you got too much. Yeah, look, y'all y'all need to call Collier and get his breakdown on how much benefit he's gotten out of the credit card game and switching all these balances around. Because, yeah, when I pull it and, you know, he, he's got $400,000 worth of Well, credit. of available credit. We're yeah. not saying I'm spending that kind of money. He's just worried as a, as a potential lender that I could go run it up, right? Maybe, maybe. Uh, it, it really just depends on, on how that's affected your credit score. Uh, because if you got great credit and you're carrying zero balance, I really don't care that you can get 400000 Man, what a guy. Yeah, that's fine with me. Just as long as you don't have the $400,000 balance when we get to closing. That's right. So don't anyway, uh, you know, like I said, there are a lot of things that we have added now um, to that we re-verify. Um, and the last one being don't close any credit accounts. Now, Okay, I was talking to a guy today that was worried about some recently closed accounts, and he was talking about uh, installment loans or a furniture loan that he had he pay off early, so it closed, okay. and he thought his credit score went down. Now, in this one scenario, it's true his credit score went down on because it was an installment loan, but he didn't have much credit. Okay, all installment loans are going to close when you pay them off. Yeah, what do you? Okay? What they're is your not, advice in general, though? They're not open ended. Well, there is no advice about an installment loan. Like I said, installment loans are going to close when you get them paid off. I would say keep two to three credit cards open. Two to three credit cards. Okay, yep. Okay. Like that. Like that. And then, you know, if you have to take out car loans, that's fine. Uh, usually, you have to take out a mortgage loan. That's fine. Uh, installment loans, different. But I would say two to three credit cards. Keep those open. And then when you look to look, if you, let's say, like you, you have 25 credit cards open, <laughs> Okay. You want to close the ones that you have had the least amount of time. Keep the ones, the major credit cards, too. Keep the ones that you've had long. What about long those time. folks out there that have had uh, that have had store credit cards, like Amanda has Ann Taylor, maybe, or you know some of these that that Clark Howard calls junk because they're really just promotional stuff, but they're credit lines that are given. Do they y'all treat those any different, like a Best Buy card or? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, that's kind of. Um, is there more risk there for y'all no, in your mind? No, no, that's that's factored into your credit score. Okay, uh, the credit scoring models like major credit cards better rather than finance companies, which is what he's talking about. Um, the Best Buys, the Home Depot, Lowe's. Uh, I didn't realize that. So they're they're TJ not Max. big name. No, those are banks. finance companies. Okay. that are providing the credit for them. I would close those first. Okay. And keep the major credit cards that you've had the longest. Again, There's more trust. In you only right? need two to three. Now, that's the other thing a lot of people don't, some people don't have enough credit. Like the guy I talked to today that had the furniture loan close and his scores went down. He only had one other credit card, and I suggest he go ahead and get another one. Uh, so he'd have two credit card accounts, and he can just manage that balance and pay that on time, and that would help him start building uh, some credit. So that's it. Bottom line, just don't. Don't make any changes. Look, when you're applying for mortgage, look, we are the pickiest people in the world. So just keep it keep it the same. Let's let's start the application and keep it the same. Well, let's move on to stocks. Uh, the uh, stock market has really uh, look, look. I ran up there earlier, like right before the show. It's twenty six thousand eight hundred today. And we were out of town last week. All right, yeah, we were in the. In, in the Caribbean, Caribbean, cruising. Caribbean Sea. So I obviously didn't see much. He checked on it a couple of days. I didn't really pay much attention. And then this week has been crazy busy since we got back. So I really haven't been paying attention. But I tell you, 26300 26300 I'm sorry. I said 800 uh, Amazon, $1,800 a share. Wow. Just wow. Are you surprised that this had not split? just killing it. I, I, don't, I don't know. I haven't. I guess so. Um... You know, I think... I, Is there a psychology to this? Yeah, I think there would be some... I think some people at Amazon are probably proud of that price. Oh, okay. You're right. So that might be like a, a lot more, of their employees are... more of an ego thing to not split. Because now, now when you do split, that does bring in a lot more buyers. Well... Uh, but I bet there's some... Speaking of Amazon, there was news today. Uh, Jeff Bezos' wife has agreed that she will not sell 25% of her stake. 
and that was, you say, that's salacious news. No, it's actually really market news because the market needed to hear from her because that, you and I have talked about it, she could have really done damage to the company with whatever she did with, I mean, because she was entitled to what, 50%? And I don't know, forgot what you said, 50% is a lot, uh, is a lot for her. Yeah, that's a lot of money. So, But, I mean, 1800 bucks a share. Snap is at $11.38. I mean, on our way back. strong on one earnings report, I'm telling you people. Boeing at 397 Wow. I mean, I should have listened to you. You got this one right when you said at 374 roughly, hey, this is the bottom probably. Man, the first day, the Monday after the news broke, the Monday after the trouble broke, it hit 365 And then I think um, that was a bottom. It might have touched that again uh, later on the next week, sometime in the middle of next week uh, when they grounded all of them. Uh, but look, everybody knows that they are going to have to recoup airlines. Uh, they're, they're, the money that they was They don't even lost. know the amount of... Uh, I don't even think they even know yet. What the cost, true the, cost. The breadth of the, of, of the expenses. And the stock has still rebounded, almost back to well, National Security interest, all that. Now, Twilio down today... We've talked about Twilio. Love TWLO, I believe, is the ticker on that. Yes. Love that. Uh, down to, golly, what, around 120? I think it was 122. I did check that one. Somewhere in there. So, anyway. Yeah. Auburn. Let's go Tigers. We got Virginia Cavaliers. What are you thinking about the game? Man, well, uh, just to step back a little bit to the North Carolina game where they absolutely crushed North Carolina what from close? start to finish. Unbelievable. And then we lose Okiki. Okay, big blow. Chuma. Terrible loss to the team. He was a big, huge player. Um, then they come out. Kentucky. Kentucky. Okay. And, and they had, listen, they have beat Kansas, North Carolina, Kentucky. I mean, uh, uh, blue blood. I mean, this is, blue this bloods, right? This is basketball. These are huge basketball names that they beat three in a row. Um, By the way, remember the stat that was the craziest? Kentucky's had more Final Four appearances than Auburn's had appearances in the entire tournament. I'm telling you. And, and, and Auburn's big guys could not have played worse against Kentucky. So that is trouble for Virginia because they're not going to play that bad again. Mm -mm. There's no way those guys are all going to foul out in the first half again like they did. They did. Yeah. I kept thinking he was yeah. lying because he goes, yeah. oh, no, that's four. Oh, it really I mean, is four. I mean, and then uh, Harper and uh, Bryce, Bryce Brown. Brown. Combined for 50 points in the last game. They're going to be probably on fire again. So it sounds like Auburn matches up well with Virginia. I think Auburn beats them and makes it to the national championship. Can you imagine? I mean, this will be – the. you know, it's funny. Everybody says, well, Auburn fans jump on the back. We didn't have a bandwagon to jump on. Yeah, I mean, who cares? Who cares? Bandwagon it up. Now, what I'll hate to see is, let's say Michigan State comes out of the other side – it's tough. All That's right. a tough game. Michigan State is a proven entity. They have been around. They got Tom Izzo. They are strong. They are physical. And okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you right now. We've seen it a lot of times in championship games. You see one team flat. The moment uh, is there. The We're moment there. just kind of over overwhelms them, and uh, that would be disappointing to see Auburn go to the championship game and then and then you know. I agree with you. We're going to take it one step at a time. I'm not going to make a prediction on the finals, but I will in the first. I think Auburn wins the game. Now, I think it's real close, and Auburn's okay in those games because I really, man, they, they've they proven they can get down 10, 15 points, and eh, no big deal. Yeah, I mean, the kids, look, 18, 19-year-old kids, uh, Bruce Pearl's got them playing really well. I think they've got the attitude to win, um, so I don't expect them to, to, to do what I was just talking about, but uh, it'll be fun to watch. All right, we'll see you next Thursday, 4 o'clock. And don't forget to download the podcast anywhere you can find great pod. That's right, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, all those great things. And we will see you next Thursday, War Eagle. He's drinking. See you guys. But not, not, he's drinking water, I think. But anyway, bye. See you.